What's going on you guys? Today we are back with another video and today we are explaining how to capture dark skin in studio. Let's get right to it. All right, you guys, so first things first, first tip is making sure that you have a makeup artist who knows how to match skin tones. Right here, we have the talented Tolu and she's doing makeup on Asiatu. So a couple things to look out for with the makeup is number one, you wanna make sure that it's not too cakey. That's not gonna complement the model's beautiful skin tone. And then number two, you wanna make sure that the skin tones match. So you wanna make sure her face matches her neck, matches her shoulders. And we'll also show you guys how to make sure all that matches inside Capture One. All right, you guys, so second tip of the day is that you wanna make sure that you pick a backdrop that complements the model's skin tone. So right here, we have this dark, deep chocolate, which really matches her skin tone. And I'll show you guys real quick what that looks like in the photos. All right, so you guys can see with a couple of captures how the photos are coming out. They're looking beautiful. But one thing I'd change is that I feel like these photos are a little bit cold. So with the skin tone in these photos, I feel like what would do them just is if we turned up our Kelvin. So normally in studio, I like to shoot at 5,500 Kelvin, which is daylight. But with her skin tone, what I'd recommend is turning your Kelvin up a little bit more to about 6,200, maybe even 6,300. It's pretty much just an eye test to see wherever you feel like fits. And so I think I'm liking around 6,400 Kelvin. And I feel like that's warm enough and it really brings out how beautiful the dark skin tone is. And if you guys want a video on how powerful Capture One is in studio, drop a comment down below and I'll make a video on that. So we're gonna take a couple more photos so you guys can see before and after difference of changing the Kelvin. So the setup we have today is the Explore 600 inside of this six foot umbrella with the diffusion in front of it. And then right here, we just have a small silver reflector on the silver side to just add some light back in. And you guys can see on screen now how these images look. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next tip. All right, you guys, so the last tip of the video is actually using a gold side reflector. Normally when you see reflectors used, they're normally silver like this or white. But if you actually use a gold side reflector, you'll get a little bit more of that gold, a little bit more of that bronze into your photos as I'm gonna show you now. And then the setup we have for this last set is a Godox AD400 Pro, a Godox AD600, and then this Flashpoint 600. And behind the model, we have a Flashpoint 200 pointed at the backdrop just to light it up a little bit. And these two are to give her a rim that'll separate her from the background. And then our key light is just our 600 with a beauty dish on it and go downward to carve into her cheekbones and give us that beautiful shape. There you go, you guys can see. There's just a little bit of gold undertone coming in from the reflection off the bottom. And I love these photos because up here you can still see that we can get a very dramatic and very deep contrasty look from this setup. So that wraps up today's video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below in the comments. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.